One thing I've noticed recently on YouTube is a number of channels producing videos talking about face masks and the detrimental effect they can have on the human body. In many cases, they simply make claims and don't show any supporting evidence. I have been wearing a mask in my role as a pilot for several months and I can't say that I have noticed anything negative. But I decided to take this one step further and do a real experiment to see if wearing a mask had any effect on my vital signs. For this experiment, I'm using a device called a Tempus IC2. This is a remote diagnostic tool that we carry on board the aircraft in the event that one of our passengers becomes unwell. We can quickly check their vital signs and furthermore, through the Wi-Fi in the aircraft and satellite-based internet, those vital signs are sent to the MedLink 24-hour operation centre where doctors are on staff to quickly provide us with advice on how to best treat the patient. So let's take a look at the Tempus a little further. So this is our Tempus IC2 unit in its case and this is the mask that I used for the experiment. You can see the specification there, KN95. I'll need two hands to get this unit out of its case, so just bear with me. So here is the unit itself, and it has legs that fold down that allow it to sit at a comfortable viewing position. On the back, we have a blood pressure cuff and the pulse oximeter, which goes on the finger and measures your oxygen saturation in the blood. Plus, we have a number of ports here and one of those is for the capnometer. Now that plugs in here like that, and then the actual capnometer goes over your ears, and those two little prongs go into the nostrils, and they measure the CO2 and also your breathing rate. So this Tempest can operate as a standalone unit, but what makes it so powerful is that when we turn it on, it connects to the aircraft Wi-Fi, which is satellite based, meaning we have service all over the world, and allows the information from the unit to be sent to the MedLink Operation Center in Phoenix, Arizona, where they have doctors available 24 hours a day to look at the information coming from the patient and to provide pilots and crews with recommendations as to how we should treat them and what medication we should give them from the first aid kits. Let's power it up. Now the first thing it will try to do is connect to the Wi-Fi. It is pre-configured for our aircraft, but we're not in the aircraft, so it will ask if we want to connect by other means. So it's trying to connect by Wi-Fi. It won't be able to do that. We're not on the aircraft. It gives you other options via Ethernet, smartphone tethering, and it even has its own built-in SIM card, but we won't change the configurations. We can just skip that step. So I now have the sensor for the pulse oximeter on my right index finger, and I'll just show you how it guides you through the setup of each of the individual sensors. Attention, connection. So it tells me that I'm not connected to Wi-Fi. I'll skip that process. It shows you step by step how to apply the blood pressure cuff and the pulse oximeter sensor. Very clear instructions. We get trained on this every year as well. Now, at the moment, it's only sensing my pulse rate and my oxygen saturation. For the experiment with the mask, I'm also wearing the blood pressure cuff and the capnometer, which gives me the breathing rate, the respiration rate, and also the CO2 in addition to blood pressure. I did the experiment for more than 20 minutes, initially without the mask, 
allowing the readings to stabilize. And then I placed the mask over my nose and mouth and left it there for about another 10 minutes so that we could compare the readings. After that, I took the mask off briefly. Let's have a quick look at those results. So just to explain what you will see in the video, this is the face of the Tempest. I also had my mobile phone sitting on the table looking directly at me and that way you can tell if I'm wearing the mask or not. The whole thing was being recorded with the P900 which is also in view in this mobile phone image and I had a timer on a second mobile phone down here. Now the time lapse goes for more than 20 minutes and you can see the various readings. Just around the 11 minute mark I put the mask on and I leave it on for a period of time and then I remove it again. Now you'll see the pulse rate, the oxygen saturation, my respiration rate, the CO2 and the blood pressure. The unit is taking regular readings of all those statistics. What I'll do is link to the full video separately because it goes for more than 20 minutes and I'll let that play in real time. If you want to watch it, please follow the link in the description below. Now, I was watching an episode of The 100 on Netflix during the experiment, so that'll explain the sound you hear in the video. So we can see the readings from the Tempest clearly, but rather than make uninformed guesses, why don't we ask a qualified physician? I sent an email to my good friend, Dr. Bob, the science guy, and he gives us his expert opinion on the readings from the Tempest. Take it away, Bob. Well, hi, Wolfie, and thank you very much for asking me to chime in on your video. This is Bob, the science guy from Michigan. I'm an internal medicine physician, so I think I'm pretty well suited to answer it. Now, your question was, does a mask affect your oxygen or your carbon dioxide levels? The answer is no, it does not. Now, the reason for this is that you have two sensors in your body. One monitors your level of oxygen, and the other monitors your level of carbon dioxide in your blood. If either of these get out of whack, the brain reads these sensors and then changes your respiratory rate. So, in short, if your carbon dioxide levels start sneaking up a little bit, your brain will make you breathe a little faster to blow that excess carbon dioxide off and bring it back down into the normal range. Now, a mask has got a relatively confined space around your mouth and nose, and as a result, there may be a tiny increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in that little bit of air right between the mask and your face compared to the air around you. Now, you're not in the capsule of Apollo 13, which is a very confined space and levels of carbon dioxide will build up very quickly. But as you recall from the movie, it doesn't become dangerous until it starts getting up into the percentages. Now, carbon dioxide as we breathe in the air or in our mask is really not that different and it's pretty much a normal level of carbon dioxide. Now, if you look at that biomedical monitor that you were hooked up to, your levels of oxygen never drop below 95%. This is normal for somebody breathing room air. It didn't matter whether you were wearing a mask or not. Now your end tidal CO2, carbon dioxide, stayed between 35 and 40 the entire time. The normal range is between 35 and 45, so you never really even made it up past the median on that. And that didn't matter whether you were wearing a mask or not. If the carbon dioxide started to sneak up at all, you would simply breathe a little bit faster. And if you look at the respiratory rate on your biomedical monitor, it ranged between 12 and about 18. The faster breathing didn't really relate to you wearing the mask, but it just varied as a normal course of events. And normal respiratory rate for an adult is somewhere between 12 and 20 breaths a minute. So I don't really think that you ever ran into a problem due to that mask with your blood chemistry. Now, there is a problem that can occur with a mask, and that is anxiety. If you are a very anxious person, having something surrounding your mouth and your nose can cause an increased level of anxiety. That's rather simple to address. All you have to do is get used to wearing the mask. Do it in a place where you're comfortable, such as your home. While you're watching TV one night, 
Wear the mask for half an hour, take it off. Next night, wear the mask for an hour, take it off. And before you know it, I mean, wearing the mask to the grocery store or the gas station or even to work or school really won't be a big deal. I've been wearing masks for over 30 years for hours at a time while doing work. And I don't even notice that I'm wearing one. It certainly doesn't affect my breathing. Now, if you deal with somebody that has a chronic lung disease, they may be running a higher than normal CO2. They may be running a lower than normal oxygen level. But putting the mask on is not going to change them very much from room air. If they're already on supplemental oxygen, the mask will not affect that at all. As a matter of fact, they'll probably have higher than normal concentrations of oxygen because not only do they have the oxygen from the cannula, the exhaled oxygen is being contained within the mask, just as a lot of people talk about the CO2 being contained within the mask. And as a result, their overall oxygenation will probably be a little bit higher. I hope that cleared you up a little bit, but I do have two questions for you, Wolfie. First of all, did you notice a change in your respiration? You didn't seem to but I'm curious if you felt short of breath at all. And second, dude, do you ever blink? This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Take care. Well, thanks for sharing your expert knowledge with us, Bob. We really appreciate it. And to answer your questions, no, I didn't notice any change in my respiration rate. I feel quite comfortable wearing these masks, having done so now for several months, and also have plenty of experience with oxygen masks on aircraft. As for not blinking, I was watching season six of The 100 and I didn't want to miss a second. So there we have it from a qualified physician after watching the results from my experiment. He agrees that there was no apparent detrimental effect to my body's vital signs from wearing the mask. As I said, if you want to watch the full video in real time, I have placed a link in the description below.